Welcome to In Soccer We Trust. YouTube friends, make sure to hit like and subscribe and get busy in the comments. I'm Heath Pierce, and today I have the honor of talking to an early candidate for MLS MVP and player on the lips of every USMNT fan, Georgie Mihailovic. Georgie, how are you, man? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate you coming on. So you're already three goals in with an assist uh, on the season out of seven games, and there's already some early MVP talk. Uh, everything's to be, everything seems to be clicking for you at the moment. Do you feel in form? And, and also, does this feel like a continuation of, of last season for you? Because there were some shouts as well of, you know, when the hype was around Ricardo Pepe and the goals that he was scoring, that maybe you were overlooked on an on a, on a, uh, end-of-season award for you as well last year. No, this is this is the best start I ever had in a season. I'm gonna be honest. Um, I know I finished the year last year pretty good. Um, uh, got more assists than I than I thought I was gonna get all year, and I think I had maybe nine assists and and nine games closing out the year. But but I know this year it's it's one of those things where I focus more on maybe scoring more. Um, I think I didn't. Is that a focus of yours? Like, is it something it is. that you're 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 you want yeah. you wanted to go and you wanted to accomplish going into the season? It was, it was. I, I don't think I scored enough last year. I don't think I was dangerous, you know, of myself, you know, taking chances for myself. And that's one thing I focused on. And and I was in January camp with the national team, and, and that's the thing that, that Greg told me is is he wants to see a little bit more goals from me. And you know, I, I just took that to heart because um I like I said, I didn't I didn't score enough last year and it's the thing that, that I focused on to do this year. And you know, I started the season great and hopefully I can keep it going. We're going to get to some uh, national team talk here in a little bit, but for now, I want to kind of focus on on your form right now with 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 Montreal. Obviously, Wilfred Nancy is has been a stating influence on 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 the team since since taking over there. What's he been like to work with? No, he's he's a really personable type of guy. He is. Um, I think he's he's someone who really knows how to get you know twenty twenty five different personalities together. Uh, come from different parts of the world, whatever you, whatever you name it, and, and come together for one one goal, one idea of the way we want to play. And, and you know, I, it, it took a little bit of time last year when I joined the team. It was, it was my first time, you know, leaving home, leaving my hometown team, joining a new team. And, you know, there's a bit of anxiety, a little bit of nerves coming into it, you know, joining a new team, new, new city, new staff, and, and how that's going to be. But, but he was, he's able, you're able to connect with him on a personal level and, and he wants you to show who you are as a human on the field. And, and I think that's where we're finding the most success. How fun is the city of Montreal? I'll be honest. Have you, have you gotten a chance to enjoy it? Cause I was, I was only, I was only at, uh, at, at in Montreal for like eight months and I was at the wrong time in my life to be there. Uh, I was too old and, you know, was uh, about to get married and things like that. But man, what a, what a city it is, right? It's, it's great. Last year we, we started the season in Miami, which is, obviously a great place to, to be too. Mm -hmm. um, but we came here uh, at the, at the end of July, I think. And, you know, we caught the tail end of the summer and, and I was able to, to walk around and see, see some of the sites in the summer before the winter started like three weeks later in <laughs> August, basically. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but it, it's, it's a great city. It's a great city. And, and now this year it's, it's, I'm really taking advantage of this, this moment. You know, I don't, I don't think I did enough of, of that last year. I was really focused on, on, you know, staying home. I'm, I'm maybe too scared to go out, but this year I'm, I'm starting to see things. Yeah, that's great. You know, on the field, you've been deployed at uh, both wings, central midfield as a wing back. Uh, what do you think your best position is in terms of, you know, I, I look back at, at, at the youth level, everybody's got an opinion on where you're best at. Obviously the best players tend to end up being in the attack. And then as you go up the ranks, people start to go, Oh yeah, I see these tools and maybe I could use you here, use you there. I mean, where do you think that, in terms of your own personal ambition that you could have the, the best impact at the highest level? No, it's, it's, it's this role that I'm playing with Montreal. Honestly, it's, I feel the most comfortable when I'm, when I'm more of like a free, mm, it's almost like a, a seven and a half, you know, in between a winger or a 10, like that space. It's, it's like a free space. I, I come in, I can move around. I can come deep. I can stay high. You know, it's, and it, it's a credit to the coaching staff as well for, for finding this position for me on the team. Now, I grew up in Chicago playing. I played as a six sometimes. I played as an eight. You know, and, and that was kind of my, my main position with Chicago is, is a, maybe a box-to-box -box midfielder. And you know, now last year I, I added some end product to my game, and this year I'm continuing to do that. So I find myself now comfortable playing towards, towards the goal. What's up with all these halves? 
you uh, Gen Zers are all about like half positions now. Nobody wants to actually own a position anymore. Everybody's a seven and a half, eight and a half, nine and a half. Yeah, yeah. Like you guys are all getting halves now. It's like you yeah. don't want to take the accountability. You know, you guys all just want to be floaters. What's going on with that? Now, no, but, it's, it's it's credit. It's credit to to how we're evolving. Honestly, I think that's what it is. Oh, you know, it's I enjoy playing a, a number ten. I enjoy having that that responsibility of being the the creator in chief of the team, the one that, you know, the attack flows through. I enjoy that, but you no, know, sometimes you have to put a little doubt in the opponent and be a half, half type of player. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, what are the goals for, for, for the team uh, this season? Well, to, to, to win the Canadian cup again, that's a, that's a club club goal every year. Um, you know, last year we, we won it. I didn't realize how important that, that hey, it's was. crazy, right? It's I crazy. Yeah, like I, 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 you know, I did the Open Cup in in the U.S. and then when I had the Canadian Cup from Montreal, we won it that year as well. There was crazy. You probably heard about it. It was crazy controversy with Edmonton and the coaches were fighting on the field. Joey Saputo was on the field trying to fight the coach or the other, not physically, but it was a wild thing. And I was like, yo, this is like, you know, Open Cup. Usually, it's like ah, this, if you make it deep enough, people start to take it serious. But they're like, you, you can feel. Like how big of a deal that is uh, once you play in that that cup competition. Oh, hundred percent. And no, oh, it, it was wild to me. We we went to Halifax the first game, mm-hmm. wild game. Never been to Halifax in my life, so that was also an interesting opportunity. Then we went to play Forge, and and just to see the, you know the the passion that even these small teams have, the these small Canadian teams have for this for this competition. Um, it's incredible because I didn't realize this, you know, like you said, with the U S open cup where, you know, when you're an MLS team playing the U S open cup, you don't really think about the Canadian championship. Mm-hmm. You know, it's and with Chicago. I never, I never thought about what the Canadian championship is. And then we go and we play the final against Toronto at home. Amazing game. And we, we win the game and, and just the, the, re- the response that we got from our supporters, how, how happy they were. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is great. So, you know, this, this competition is huge. It's huge. It's huge for the city. It's huge for this club, and you know, every year we feel like we could win it. And, and that was obviously my first uh, championship of, of my career, too. That was my first trophy. So if that's one thing that you know, I want to do, is that's probably the, I wouldn't say easiest way to a, a trophy, because obviously these these tournaments anybody could win. You know, Last night I was watching the, the Open Cup games, and you, know, you see already some upsets. Um, but... But for this club, that's the first. That's the first thing we're looking at, and, and the other thing is obviously the the domestic league, the MLS league. We we last year we were close to making playoffs, but this year it's that's the main thing. We, we're going to make playoffs. When you went to Montreal, were you fearful of you know at, at a player your age? You know, I'm sure you've programmed in your mind like, okay, I got to go here, I got to do this right. If I get to this, then I go to the next level. Did that feel like the right next step for you, or was it something that you had to sort of buy into in order to make the most of of that next step of your career? No, it was it was it was an interesting moment. It was an interesting moment when I made the decision to come here. Um, it was the end of 2020. Um, you know, Chicago and I didn't agree to anything and I wanted to play. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to think that a change was maybe the best thing for me. Um, there was, there was some, some options maybe within the league, you know, it's always for the last couple of years, all oh, maybe Europe, maybe Europe, but nothing, nothing concrete came my way. Mm-hmm. So I said, you know what, um, I might take a different route. And, and then Thierry Henry called me while, uh, I was in the December camp in 2020. And I said, you know what, I s- this guy's calling my phone. I think I need to need to really take advantage of this opportunity. And and I spoke with the sporting director here and just just listening to what they're saying about the environment they want to build, the the vision that the club wants to go in, and and just the fact that it's it's a place that you know I never really thought of going and never playing in uh, Canada. You now I'm living in Canada now. It's it's wild to me, but but it's all those. It's almost like those in those those uncertainties drove me closer to making this decision. It's like the uncertainties attracted me even more. And, you know, I, looking back, I think it's the, the best decision I ever made. You know, looking at the fact that you, you, you got this message from Thierry Henry, you're now playing under Wilfred Nancy. Who, who is it that whether current or former that you try to model your game uh, most after? Um, you know, it's, it comes in waves. It comes in waves. I think you asked me this question Four years ago, I'd say, you no know, player like Thiago or or Iniesta or even my teammate Schweinsteiger at the time. You know, someone that's that holds the middle of the field and you know, all that that 
maybe not not sort of a an engine box to box, but a technical box to box type of player. Now I, I look at players, you know, my favorite player at the moment is Kevin De Bruyne. Just you know, sometimes you see him playing on the wing, sometimes you see him as a ten, sometimes an eight, and you know that's that's kind of like that free free role that that he plays with that I have with with Montreal. That's amazing. Uh, you know, this is what uh, Victor Wanyama had to say about you a few days ago. He's on fire at the moment, so I see him if he continues like this in bigger leagues, to be honest. He won't be here uh, with us for long. Do you have that in the back of your mind as like uh, something that could be on the horizon in terms of uh, a move? I don't even want to say abroad, but like a move kind of up uh, to another level within your career. Is that something that you're thinking about at the moment? Um, it is. It is, I think, and I think it's important that that I do think about that because it's it's these these goals, these motivations that that really grow a player. It's something that you wanna you wanna look at something and say, okay, that's where I want to be. How am I gonna get there? And, and having this goal that, yeah, I mean, I don't want to disrespect MLS in any way, but well, you see, like it's it's a dream of a lot of young players to play in a in a top top club in Europe. That's it's almost like a no brainer and. And when I think about that, it's like, yeah, that's it's something that I want to do in my career. But the only way I'm going to do that is if I perform well in Montreal. You know, you're obviously in 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 peak form right now, and most people, I think, have all agreed that that you've been uh, wrongfully overlooked by the national team with the form that you have in terms of now, you know, the size of the roster that we're bringing in. But uh, sort of what conversations have you had with Greg Berhalter throughout the process? Have, has there been a, a continued dialogue? You mentioned something he said to you earlier in the show. I mean, sort of where, where do you stand right now with, with, with regard to the U.S. men's national team? Yeah, I think the conversation I had with him has is, is been nothing but positive. Um, I was in January camp this year with him, and, and he was happy with what he saw. Um, and, and he said, I don't know, going forward, it's, it's, it's form. That's form that matters, especially in a World Cup year. You know, Nations League is well coming up. It's the players that are, that are in the most form that are going to get the to get the looks. And, and yeah, it's having this – the World Cup in the year is is something that, that I strive for. Um, it's this idea that, that drives me every day to go, go and play at the best level I can because, you know, um, I'm sure you know, like, the, when the World Cup year comes around, it's a once-in-a-lifetime – opportunity that it's like the pinnacle of a professional soccer player's career to play in this competition so uh, this idea that going to the world cup it it just motivates you um and you know most recently i haven't had much conversation with him uh, but hopefully when when the next camp comes around that there'll be some some dialogue you know i i always go back to my world cup qualifying cycle or the one that i was involved the most in with 2010 and for an attacking player and i say this a lot that there was a number of players that actually went to the world cup and now there might be 26 they're saying in terms of roster size but you know that year that that i was in guys that weren't part of any of our not really not not at all involved but somewhat kind of distant to our world cup qualifying were players like Edson Buttle, uh Hercules Gomez uh, Robbie Finley, those three guys went to the World Cup and it was all based on like this form of just timing and the fact that we were going into a World Cup and, and, and that they could play a specialty type of role. You know, some of the tools that you have is, have you thought about any of that of, of you know, one, when the news came out that there might be an expanded roster size for a World Cup, but two, just sort of a, a potential role that you could play uh, within the national team if, if you were called in late uh, heading towards the World Cup? Yeah, no, um, no, this... The role, uh, whatever whatever role that they they have for me is, I'm obviously going to take it, uh, 100. Mm -hmm. percent You know, whether it's the the last man on the bench or a starting position, it's I'm going to take this just to go to the World Cup. Um, you know, I haven't thought much about having an expanded roster, what that means for for my chances. You know, like you said, you know, going into the World Cup, it's it's form that that's probably the most important. And if I'm playing well this season, you know, and, and I get called into the summer camp and and I do well there and I prove that, you know, maybe I am a guy that, that belongs with this squad. Um, a lot of guys are saying that this is the, the golden generation of U.S. soccer. So so if, if the coach and his staff thinks that I belong with that with that group, then then that's obviously a very great thing for me. But but yeah, at the end of the year, it's it's the most important when you're if you're playing well with your club. Well, you've definitely got a lot of people kind of backing you. You know, obviously your, your, your teammate Alistair Johnson said, I'll put it like this. As a Canadian, I wouldn't like to go up against him on a consistent basis. Maybe it's best that they're actually keeping him out. So thank you, Greg, for leaving him at home, but he deserves it. So there's clearly, I mean, you know, people out there taking the shots for you that, that think that you should be 
in the national team. Looking back at this World Cup qualifying cycle, was there any moments or any systems or anything where you thought well, I could have an impact or, or here's some things that like in terms of your skill sets that you bring to the table that you think are different than what the current roster uh, offers? Yeah, no, it's obviously I'm, if I'm not called in, I'm a huge supporter of the national team. Uh, I think I'll always be a fan first on my couch watching the games. And, and that's how I, I kind of felt uh, maybe a little bit, uh, no, dang, I, I wish I was there. You know, yeah, that's normal. That's, that's normal. That's normal. Yeah. But but no. Besides that, it's no. It's nothing short of being just supportive of of the team. Um, and yeah, of course, I want to be there. Of course, I'm not. I'm not going to say, oh, like I should be there. I should be there. I'm not going to say any of that. But but I know that the only the only way I'm going to get there is is playing well with the club and, and you know scoring, assisting, being in good form, and and also helping the team win. Do you feel an increased pressure in a in a World Cup year? You know, going back to again my, my time, I felt like as 2010 was rolling around, I was like, I need to be playing, I need to be, and and I felt maybe I was putting weight on my shoulders uh, more than I should have. Where you know you seem to have a pretty even keel mind of like controlling what you can control, but do you feel that lingering in the background of what a great year could mean, or do you feel like you just got to do the best you can and it's out of your hands at that point? No, no, I I actually do. I do feel that, um, you know, this, and I, I mentioned this before, but but having these goals that you want to accomplish in your career, short term goals like you know the World Cup is at the end of the year, or long term goals of of how many trophies you want to win in your career, and and having these goals is is probably the most important thing as a professional athlete, um, just because it's it's what drives you every day to to play at your best, and and yeah, no, this the idea that there there is a World Cup at the end of the season, uh, MLS is probably the only season where the the league is going to end right when the world cup starts so that's that's a probably a huge positive as well but no knowing that it's it, it it does give me a little bit more of not i wouldn't say like anxiety or nerves but more just like yeah like okay this is what i'm going to do this is this is what i'm training and playing well for uh you're 23 now uh- if you weren't to be, if you weren't selected um, for for this World Cup, I mean, w- what is it that you feel you have to do, or what's going to motivate you, knowing that you've got twenty twenty six, and you said you know potential golden generation. I think we're at the very beginning of 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 the future of of hopefully multiple golden generations. But you know, what is it that 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 you think you'll have to do, or what will motivate you to to, to sort of keep yourself in contention, knowing that it's another you know three and a half year cycle to the to the twenty six World Cup. Honestly, uh, that's that's a tough question. It's a tough question. No, it, if, if I don't make the World Cup roster this year, it's not the end of the world. I'm, I'm still gonna have a hopefully a long and healthy career ahead of me. You know, yeah, like I'm 23 now. By the time the World Cup comes, I'll be 24, and hopefully, you know, 12 12 years left in my career. You know, if I'm lucky. So, so that's a that's a long career and and multiple chances to go to a World Cup with the national team. And of course, if if I if I don't get selected for the World Cup this year and, and I and I played well in the season, I'll be a little bit I might feel a little hard done by, but but I know that's not the end of, of my national team career. Are you uh are you are you close to any of the players in the national team pool right now? Is there any who, like who would you consider your your closest kind of friends or mates or or anybody uh, currently in the in the US national team pool? Uh Keep in touch with anybody or group chats or social yeah, yeah, media. Now, now and then, now and then, you know, uh, whether it's Walker Zimmerman, you know, responding to an Instagram story or something. It's not really texting on a, a, a regular basis or anything mm-hmm. like that. But, but yeah, it's just it's maybe more the MLS guys, just because you could probably relate to them a bit more than the mm-hmm. European guys. But, but everybody on the national team is is like a family member. Yeah. It, I guess, uh, you know, and I, I got just a few more questions that I want to ask, but if, for you, you know, being a teenager watching the U.S. fail to qualify in 2018, I get what was it like for, you know, for you now seeing the team and knowing that you're in the player pool, knowing that you're, you're, you're kind of kind of chomping at the bit to get into the team more often. But what was it like for you to see this team kind of in this group that's many of which are built from your generation sort of overcome the failures of, of 2018 and now qualify for this World Cup? Yeah, no, I remember in in that one, um, it was it was a weird feeling. Obviously, it was it wasn't a great feeling when they didn't qualify. But but as as a 
I just signed with my first contract. I was in my first season with the fire and I had no, no thoughts of, of where I would be in five years. I would be with the national and I'd be in contention for a world cup. So, so maybe I didn't, I didn't feel no, that, that pain that obviously Christian Pulisic felt being mm-hmm. in that, in that group. Um, but, but, but coming now that I'm in the, the idea that I could go to a world cup and seeing them qualify. It's, it was a great feeling. I was, I was actually jumping in my, in my house, watching them qualify. That's awesome. And, and then uh, I guess on the flip side, you know, team Canada, was there, a, was there a surprise to you that they, they qualified and maybe you're not allowed to say if you were actually surprised, but I mean, I knew that they would do well. I go back to the gold cup when, when coach Herdman was just co- constantly losing the best players and just kept saying this, like we're playing it like it's a final every game. And, we all kind of laughed about it, but he built this like mentality within the team that once they got all that quality back, they just seemed to really cruise and be really hard to play against. You know, were you surprised or shocked at, at, at how well Canada has done or how much they've developed? Obviously, even going back to our conversation earlier about the, the uh, Canadian Cup, there was very few teams then. And now there's a lot more, obviously, with the, the, the Canadian Premier League and, 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 and now, the, you know, the MLS teams and the quality of the players being developed there. But were you shocked at just how well they did? <laughs> Maybe a little shocked. bit. Yeah, I'd look over both your shoulders and then blink twice if you were. Well, well, let's not say shocked because shocked is a little bit of a headline. Yeah, surprised, yeah. pleasantly surprised. How about I was, that? I was pleasantly surprised. No, yeah. the, no, it's I was pleasantly sur- surprised, and honestly, it's great to see it. It's great to see it, and I'm not just saying that because I play for a Canadian team and mm-hmm. half of my team is on the national team, but. But no, it's just seeing the seeing the sport grow in this country and and what it means to to not only the players that that were with Team Canada that are in Montreal, but but the young the young kids walking around um, and and what this means to them. It's the first time I think in 36 years going to a World Cup and and it's 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 great to see. It's great to see this this growth of, of the sport in this country. Um, and I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> It, sometimes it gets annoying hearing Alistair Johnson and Kamal Miller and Sam Piet talk about the national team and how they're first place in the in in qualifiers. It gets annoying sometimes, but but I got to give it to them because they earned it. They earned it. They mm-hmm. they cruise like you said. They cruise through qualifiers. Um, you know they with and also with the talent that's coming up in this country too. It's it's great to see from them. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't want to be in 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 the locker room either, dealing with with that oh, right it, now. You it, know? it was too much. It was too much. It really was. And I hope they're not going to watch this. <laughs> we'll make sure we tag all of them in there uh, yeah. and 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 use the word shocked as like shocked at finishing uh, top. But I mean, I don't think anybody could have. Maybe they they could in retrospect, but predicted that they would have this explosive of a growth in the depth of the player pool. You were a guy that was in, in Bradenton, right, for a bit. And I was there as well from, from – I was in the second group that went into to, to residency. And to now see the academies built out everywhere and the growth of it, you, you, you look at countries like, like Canada and the growth and the explosive growth that they've had of quality players being able to come through academies, be in professional environments. Do you see that now with, with, with the academy, uh, whether that was in Chicago or, or, or in Montreal? I do. I do. And – no, I, I I sometimes keep tabs on what's happening in Chicago just because I, I know a lot of the guys on the team and and over over the break I would train with some of the new homegrowns um, that they signed and and the talent is is incredible what's coming through coming through the systems and and also in Montreal you know the, there's guys we have um, you know Ismail Kone who's who's up and come he just got his first Canada Canada call up and you know it's a player that it's almost like you you've never heard of this player in your life he had a very um, interesting route to, to the first team in Montreal. I think he was bouncing around. I think he's 19 only. He was bouncing around a couple local clubs and and then I think he was at the academy and then they dropped him from the academy. So he went, I think he went to Belgium and then they brought him back and now he's flying. So it's it's almost like there's there's so much talent that a lot of guys are just going, you know, are, are just getting overlooked. There's just, just a lot of talent in this country and it's it's really great to see. That's awesome. Well, Georgie, thank you so much for uh, joining us on In Soccer We Trust. Of course, we wish you all the best. We're all rooting for you. Hopefully, you make that final roster because we are. We have been uh, screaming for your name to be called in in each of our uh, our national team focused uh, 
shows and conversations that we're having. So we appreciate you taking time out of your day. Hopefully you continue to have the same form that you do and are currently having. And of course, for all of you that are watching this, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. And uh, if you listen to this in audio, uh, subscribe to this wherever you get your podcast. In Soccer We Trust. That is it for myself, Heath Pierce, and of course our producer, Des Norris. And Georgie, thank you so much. We will see you guys next time. Oh, thank you for having me. It was fun.